Let us pray. Almighty and most gracious God, we give you thanks for giving us this day and for calling us here to worship in this unique way. We gather to praise your name and to claim that your faithfulness endures from generation to generation. We see signs of your faithfulness all around us in acts of love, mercy, generosity, and new life. Help us claim your faithfulness as we seek to increase our faithfulness in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the scripture reading for today is taken from, taken from the book of John, chapter 10, verses 1 to 10. Jesus is the good shepherd. Anyone refusing to walk through the gate into a sheepfold who sneaks over the wall must surely be a thief. For a shepherd comes through the gate. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice and come to him, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. He walks ahead of them, and they follow him, for they recognize his voice. They won't follow a stranger, but will run from him, for they don't recognize his voice. Those who heard Jesus use this illustration didn't understand what he meant, so he explained it to them. I am the gate for the sheep, he said. All others who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to them. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in by way of the gate will be saved and will go in and out and find green pastures. The thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. My purpose is to give life in all its fullness. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning again. Can you hear me okay? 
Yes. So as we are coming together in worship today, there are a couple of themes that to me spoke to us and speak to us through the scriptures. For us, it is hard for us to perhaps forget that today is the first Sunday of the month. And as the first Sunday of the month, had we not been gathering in this way, but in our more normal practice, we would have been gathering around the table of God. We would have been celebrating the Lord's Supper. We would have broken bread and shared it one with another. The themes in the scriptures from today also include um, a very familiar and famous passage from the Gospel of John in which we hear about John particularly highlighting Jesus sharing of the image of Christ as the shepherd. He speaks of him as the gate and as the shepherd, as the one who serves as one who shelters and protects, as one who leads and one who guides. Thinking of these themes, it reminds me particularly of all of the wonderful I am sayings that we hear throughout the Gospel of John. The I am sayings remind us and they hearken through back to the hearing of Moses, the, the revelation of God to Moses. When there we hear in Exodus 3, by the burning bush that the Lord claims that his name is simply I am. And as John's gospel highlights in these I am sayings, seven sayings, which have become so familiar, but sustain us and encourage us in so many different ways. In those verses, we hear and we see so many different facets of who this divine Christ is. In the early parts in chapter six, we hear I Jesus share with those who are following, I am the bread of life. I am, he will continue later, I am the light of the world. I am the door of the sheep or the gate of the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. These themes of leading and feeding are throughout our scriptures as a reminder that God sustains us and fills us God provides a kind of food for us, a kind of sustenance that is not just that sustenance that fills our bodies. For it can be said that one can physically survive, but if the spirit has died and is dying, then one, in fact, in many ways, feels and is dead. So let us remember how we are led and fed by God, as we gather, it's particularly challenging to miss a particular ritual that is so meaningful to us in Holy Communion. But it is interesting to remember that from a historical standpoint, that which we practice as Holy Communion is just one piece of what were three pieces of the practice and gathering of Christians in the early church. The practice which later became separated and in many parts of our community has disappeared was known as the agape meal or the love feast. The love feast, but also the practice that we know as Holy Communion were two of three parts of a larger celebration and gathering. And in many ways, what it means to be a Christian and the Christians that you might meet there out in there in the world might speak to our gatherings and their importance in different ways. If we were to reach out and speak to different Christian friends of ours, and we were to ask them, what are they missing in the rituals of worship as we usually practice them, what would they say? Would, in fact, all of their answers be the same? It has been said that ordinary Christians do in fact give us different answers. 
If you were perhaps to reach out to an Anglican friend or Episcopalian friend or perhaps a Catholic friend, the missing of the communal gathering and that which is the principal center that they might speak of aching for the most might be the celebration of the Eucharist or Holy Communion. If you were to reach out to a Christian that might define themselves as an evangelical Christian, they might differently answer that it is in fact the singing and the preaching that is the center of worship, which they miss also, or perhaps even the most. If you were to ask a charismatic Christian, they might highlight other pieces of the worship, not just the worship and the praise, but the experience of the miraculous gifts, the language of the spirit being present amongst us. So what does it mean for us to gather on this particular Sunday and to reacquaint ourselves with the ancient practice and tradition of the love feast? The love feast in no way is foreign to us as United Methodists, and in no way is actually foreign to us in our entire history from John and Charles Wesley, though it had gone quite dormant and quite quiet for hundreds of years in Christian practice. The meal was very much gathered around food, as is much sometimes of our communal gathering as well today. But what differentiated this particular part of the gathering was the sharing of one another's stories, one another's lives, the sharing of one another's lives in such a way that there was the speaking to how God's grace had been experienced in each of the person's lives in that week, in that time. It was a time to speak to how God's presence had been that sustaining force in their life this week. How we have been fed by the Spirit of God. This was particularly brought back and was particularly reignited by the Moravian tradition. And it was this particular tradition that reintroduced it to John and Charles Wesley and made it an early practice of our church as well. However, with the ways things change in over 300 years, it is not as center as it once was, while many of its remnants are still with us. So just to back up and give just a little bit more historical context, I'd like to share with you this video that was produced by United Methodist Communications that speaks in just two short minutes to the wares and the whys of the love feast. Give me two seconds. Oh, and it went right over my tab. Ah, get out of there. In the blood of Christ. United Methodist churches worldwide celebrate communion regularly. But there was a time when pastors had to travel long distances to reach churches. So instead of communion, members had a gathering known as a love feast. There were even special vessels to use in those early days, explains church historian Dale Patterson. If you ever see a cup displayed with three handles, it was probably a love feast cup. Methodists practiced a rite that we call the love feast. It has its roots way back in Christian history. Wesley bumped into it through uh, his contact with the Moravians. Today, some communion services like this one at Peace Tree United Methodist in Memphis give us an idea of what those early love feasts might have been like. What is it? It is the class or the local church community getting together and sharing water and bread. I would take a drink of the water, I would give it to you, the next person sitting next to me, and I would say a thank you of some kind. I might say a prayer, I might say a blessing, and I would pass that to you and then you could take a drink 
turn to the next person, pass it to them, share good news with them. It was a way of helping build community. The love feast is relational. It is me sharing with others, with you, how God's grace has been working in my life today. So it's very different in meaning and tone and purpose. The love feast helps us share that life, which Wesley felt was so important. Christian life needs to be a shared life. It's a life that I live with the Spirit and I share with my friends and families of the community. And it's community building. We as Methodists are still famous for our potluck suppers, which is also still a way of sharing God's grace and goodness to us. This video was brought to you by the people of the United Methodist Church through world service donations. So did you hear that? I had to back it up and listen to it over and over again to really let it sink in. And there's another video that's trying to play on its own. <laughs> okay. We don't hear it. We don't hear it. We just hear you. My channel in the background is just being a little bit obnoxious. So what I want to highlight in that are these phrases. The class or the local church community gathers together. The class or the local church community gathers together. And then they share in simple things. Some of our texts say bread and water. Others just say simple drinks and simple meal snacks. We take those. And as we share them, and as we pass them one to the next, what we share with them is the grace of how God has been working in our lives, how God has touched us in our lives. It is a sharing of life. As I've listened to the things that you have shared with leadership and even as I've spoken to you individually, what much of we have been missing is this sharing of life. Perhaps we have not done it in a formalized way, in a way that we would think of as formalized, but when I hear those words and I think of those cupcakes that Tegan makes, the monkey bread that Sue Mathers makes, the coffee that Mary Lou prepares and makes sure all of the supplies are there. The way that if you were a newcomer, perhaps you might struggle to get into our back door because there is the community sharing around this tiny space, shoving sometimes 10, sometimes 12, sometimes 17 people into that back entrance to share life then we have, in fact, in many ways, not called it love feast, but we have practiced it. So in our gathering together today, as you lift up your coffee cup and Gail maybe invites you to pass it to the person beside you, how have you experienced God's grace this week? And listen, I won't put you on the spot first. How has God been present in my life this week? How have I felt God's presence? This week has particularly been filled with many different kinds of stress. I felt an incredible amount of gratitude for the opportunity to worship together last week, for there to have been so few glitches, for there to be so many of us that could come together. That felt like God's grace. But with the week also came additional stressors, came the realities of what does really the next steps look like. And 
the fear that creeps up about exactly how long will we be away from our loved ones. Yesterday, we were blessed to celebrate Steve's birthday and receive a surprise socially distanced visit from some family. But as they left, I could feel my body physically aching, physically aching for missing the embrace of some of the most loved ones in my family. But I've also experienced God's grace when incredible, surprising, great news came as you, the members of the church, diligently offered your support of the church. You reached out and you said what this service meant. You offered your financial support and you, in those ways of demonstrating faith, shared God's grace with one another and said that we have an incredible message to continue to proclaim. How have you seen God's grace? Where have you been blessed this week? Let us just take a moment of prayer. And then I'm going to invite us for those that are able to offer some prayers up in the chat. Um, and if you would like to verbalize the prayer, um, I think Gail's going to give us some instructions about how we're going to open microphones and share with one another. So let us pray. Gracious God, as we gather together, we know we stand in traditions that are deep, that have been formative, that only perhaps when they are removed from our regular practice do we realize how incredibly important they are. Be present at our table, Lord. Be here and everywhere adored. Bless our gathering and our sharing that together we experience your incredible grace come upon us all. In Jesus' name, amen. Gail? I'm on it. So if you're used to um, 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 YouTube, you know you can go up in the right-hand corner and do a full screen. And you can see each other in sort of, we call it the Brady Bunch, <laughs> the Brady Bunch um, screen. Um, so uh, I thought it would be really fun if we held up our glasses and kind of pretended, I'm sorry, I can't demonstrate because I have no camera today, pretended passing to the next frame and sharing with the person next to you. For example, on my screen, I see that Deb is next to John and Gloria. And if Deb, if you take your cup in your left hand and pass it over, John and Gloria will receive um, the cup from you in a kind of virtual visual way. Um, so you know how to unmute yourselves. If you have something to share right now, um, um, just unmute yourselves um, and let's do it that way. Um, one at a time, go ahead. Who's first? Anyone have anything to share? Hi, uh, Kathy. Kathy. Sure, I'll start. I, there's so many things I'm grateful for. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It would just take forever to mention all of them. But uh, gratitude prayers are probably the um, the most prevalent prayers in this household. <laughs> so uh, I'm just so grateful. I'll just mention the one, and clearly the one all of uh, most of you have too. Is I'm just so grateful for all of you who uh, have made this service happen these last couple of weeks, uh, especially Lorelai and Gail that have just figured out the whole thing, um, along with Deb and, uh, and Sue and, and um, Jess and, and whoever else. I'm so grateful for you. And I'm so grateful for all of you that um, um, are trying to help out with the food pantry. And just think about other people and their needs rather than just your own. Sorry. Mm -hmm. 
and I'll pass it to somebody. <laughs> Anyone else want to share? Deb Pranzato. Um, I'm going to echo um, Kathy's thoughts about how beautiful it is for us to be able to worship together. And I think the music definitely ties us together so incredibly beautifully. Um, just, you know, I, I, I raised a, a in the chat box, asked for prayers. I lost two very dear friends this week. Um, but just as this um, worship started, received word, and this is the blessing of new life. Um, last week, I asked for prayers for my niece, um, Hillary in San Diego. She has a very complicated pregnancy um, and just word, received word that they're delivering uh, this little boy by C-section this morning. But at 34 weeks, he's already five pounds, eight ounces. Oh. Mm. And so he's he's a pretty a pretty robust little boy. So I think as much as we grieve the losses that we have, we get to celebrate the new life. And that's what I'm really... Um, grateful for today. And I will pass the mug on. Hmm. Hello? Amanda. Someone is sharing our screen? I believe that might actually be Priscilla, Margaret Nieto's daughter. I don't know that she's doing it intentionally. Um, Priscilla, if you happen to have at the bottom of your screen a stop sharing, you can click on that. Um, unless you're going to share something with us, Priscilla, it's really great to see you. I assume mom might be there off to the side somewhere. Uh, she's coming. She just had to. Yeah, she's coming. She'll be here soon. Okay. Can you the bottom of your screen just get to stop Because we don't get to see her. We're getting to see your computer. <laughs> okay. So. Be able to do that they were talking because they saw me. They really want to see you. <laughs> I'm working on it. Um, <laughs> she's listed as Priscilla McDonald, Gail. I'm doing it. It's okay. I understand. It's a lot to scroll back and forth. Okay. So now we see our bulletin, right? Yep. Okay. And thought I heard another Yay. Perhaps voice or two. So um, I'd like to uh, uh, lift up a, a, not a share, but a worry that Chris, Chris Troxell just said that young Silas is running a fever and is, rec is recommended to get a COVID test and they're at Abington this morning. Hmm. Um, so um, we certainly need to pray for them um, and, and for the beauty of that young family. Um, who we all love so much. Tyler and Jess's youngest child, is that correct? For those that might not remember. Yes, specific. Silas. Yes. Um, our, uh, my, my love and prayers to them and all of ours, um, Chris. Um, uh, mm. I, that makes me think about um, another sharing and something I've been so grateful for in our community is our many generations. Um, and how beautiful they all are. The young people that are um, stepping up in this, um, this crisis, this pandemic, you know, um, Nyasha's and Tegan's and um, just little, their artwork lifted me so, up so much in the first few weeks of this. And um, the, the, the sharing that so many of you have done with your, uh, your children and some of their antics, and um, I can't tell you how much I laughed and loved Will and Emma's um, pantry adventures. Um, 
So um, keep sharing all of those. Um, thinking of our children is just one of the highlights of my life. And um, thank you for that. Just a couple of other prayers that are lifted up in the chat, if perhaps you can't actually see them yourself. Um, Janice Whittle lifted up her former neighbors in Willow Grove, um, who she, I think, had mentioned to me also that the Mathers know really well, um, whose niece, Regina, uh, lost both of her in-laws um, about a week and a half ago within hours of each other um, and used to live right here in Willow Grove. Um, Sue's also lifted up um, their friend Chris, who's been diagnosed with cancer and is getting bi a biopsy this week. Um, and uh, a number of general thank yous for today's service coming together, um, for the power in being able to actually hear one another um, and be gathered together in this way. Um, and I love this comment from Kim that if you can't see it in the chat, you would probably appreciate it. Kim Swaje wrote, I love that Carol and I are just sitting here crocheting, just like we would be doing if we were physically together in church, um, in church. So we're, we're here doing some of the same kinds of things. Um, with no other prayers, please do continue to feel free to forward those prayers to us through the week. And we are working to figure out the best ways to get all of those prayers um, out to the community so everybody hears them and can lift them up. But let us um, then just now gather together in, in a final prayer uh, for us as a people. Gracious God, we have been asked to shelter in place as a way to keep one another safe for us, in fact, this is an act of communal grace. It acknowledges that the Lord has not left us nor forsaken us, and that we in divine love are held securely. We are not alone. We are still together as we are united by our prayers, united in seeing one another's faces and witnessing to one another the hope that is before us in the world. You re we remember that you are the one who has loved us each from the very beginning of the world. Even now, as we are all being held in the security of your loving arms, we also remember that you are attentive to every one of our prayers, even the prayers that we find difficult to speak. You have knit us together, aware of our needs before we reveal them. And you have begun to act even before we know how to cry out. Do keep us attentive to the needs of those around us. So you might illuminate your gracious presence through acts of kindness and acts of generosity. Continue to be present at this table, which we share. May we continue to feast in the knowledge of your eternal presence with us always. We do this and offer these prayers in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Oh, it's hard to be on. And forgive us not our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I don't have very many announcements except for just um, two in particular. Um, in the past couple of days, we've been invited to be part of the Bells Across Pennsylvania Day, which will happen this evening at 7 o'clock. Um, the Bells Across Pennsylvania is something that was initiated by the Mayor's Association of Pennsylvania, and they are inviting individual families, um, but also houses of worship at 7 o'clock to ring their bells for three minutes. 
The ringing of the bells for three minutes is to symbolize um, three things. One are uh, prayers, um, especially for essential workers and, and those that are serving at the front lines of essential services. Number two, to offer um, a sense of solidarity as we would do this all together at one time, but also a sense of resolve that we will um, continue to walk through this together um, and we will stay with one another um, in this unique time and uh, time of challenge. Um, another just reminder, we'll be sending out some more announcements tomorrow morning. Um, there are still a few upper rooms that are available. If you would like to um, get them, you can get them at the mailbox that's just outside of the back door, or you can contact the church office. Um, the church office will be open from 9 to 12 a.m., both on Tuesday and on Friday. Um, and so that'll be a time that you can call right into the office um, and talk to Wendy. Uh, at other times, please Please go ahead and leave a message anyway. The messages are being checked multiple times a day and as is the email, uh, the church email, um, and we'll do our best to get back to you. But those will be times that she will be uh, sat by the phone to be able to answer um, any particular questions. Um, I think I saw a hand waving from um, Kathy. Uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to point out if anybody had noticed it, that Margarita is here right now. Yay, Hi, she's Margarita. Here. Good to see you. <laughs> Mm -hmm. ah. Now you can say something. Oh, it's so good to see you. Thank you. Thank you for all your, your messages, you know, okay, Kathy. You, you always, you always, always in the front. I, I love you, you know that. Oh. I always go upstairs. Oh. I, I think we should wish margarita a happy birthday her birthday is this week oh happy yes. birthday tuesday happy birthday to margarita i'm going to be 29. <laughs> <laughs> she heard you laughing huh? i tell you her real age but i'm under threat of my life i can't <laughs> no they don't they, they all know they have been. I, I had Dorothy in her castle just kept catching me up. <laughs> uh, that's nice. I only, I only can see my friends there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't see they, them. Then they're seeing us. Yeah. Okay. So all right. They, <laughs> have a good week. Happy birthday, Mark. Yes. Then let us go together and share in our closing hymn. Uh, it has a very dance-like quality to you. It'll be a familiar um, traditional folk, kind of folk song, American song. Um, you'll hear that, but it, the, to the words, I come with joy, I come with joy. And uh, Gail will be sharing the screen so that you have those words. <laughs> Sundays, I was in trouble with Brad for not remembering to turn my microphone on and off. I think I'm even more in trouble now. <laughs> Let us go forward from this place, remembering that the Lord is our shepherd. 
As we hold, the Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. For in pastures we will rest secure, and our shepherd will lead us forth. By the still waters we will find security, and we will find rescue. We will find the abundant life that is promised to us. Go forward from this place, remembering these promises from Jesus, who is connected to the great I am.